Okay, we are going to now talk about different types of graphs. You learned about the parts of the graph. Now we're going to, woo, Brutus loves graphing. Now, we're going to figure out what types of graphs we should be using. Okay, because there's different types. Just going to go over the different types, and then we're going to look at your data and figure out how we're going to graph it. Woo! So, first thing. First type of graph is called a line graph. So it's really a line. Line graph. And the purpose of a line graph is to look at woo, the effect of one variable on another. We want to see if the independent variable had really any effect on the dependent oh. variable. We want to see if there's a relationship. Okay, so line graph number one. A line graph is really used to show the effect the independent variable has on the dependent variable. And we use continuous data. So uh, anything where it's happening over time, we use a line graph. If you want to see uh, the change that happened over a certain amount of time, that would be a line graph you'd use for that. If you were looking for continuous change over time, you want to see if there's a, a change over time. You would use a line graph. So, line graph shows the effect of IV on DB, the independent variable on the dependent variable. And it really shows a continuous change. So, we use it really to, to demonstrate continuous change. For example, it could be like the acceleration of a car. Woo! So acceleration, we could have maybe like time, and then speed. So acceleration is really speeding up, slowing down, um, a change in speed. You want to see if, there's, if the car is accelerating over time. And we would use a line graph. So the time could be seconds. Okay, so here is an example of a line graph. Looking at a car, <coughs> woo, car's acceleration over time. So we're looking at a car's acceleration. We're looking at over time in seconds, 10 seconds, 20, uh, 30, and so forth, and the speed, okay, in miles per hour in this case. But this is over an amount of time. So anytime that something is, a, you're looking at a continuous change over time, line graph. So what this shows us then is the relationship between time and speed. Woo! So the more time, the faster the speed. Because uh, cars take time to speed up accelerate a little faster than others. It's one thing that they use, they like, always say like a zero to 60 in 10 seconds or whatever. That's a claim they make. Second type of graph we're gonna look at is called a bar graph. And a bar graph is really used to represent categorical data. Data you can count. Okay, like um, it can include qualitative data. So for example, if we do surveys on um, the types of pets people own. So a bar graph uses sets of categorical data. Categorical data. You're going to use categorical data. In other words, data has categories. Here we have a bar graph representing, let's say we did a survey in uh, San Francisco. We want to figure out how many people own these different types of pets. So here we have the types of pets, horse, dog, cat, fish, bird, and then the number of people that own them. So these are categories of pets. Okay, this is so, if we're using categories, we are going to use a bar graph. So this is a way, we can look at this now and easily tell 
which type of pet most people own in San Francisco. This is much easier to interpret data from a graph than it is to read a bunch of numbers. Data can get confusing very fast. So third type of graph, or another type of graph, is called a pie chart. The pie chart, the pizza pie. I gotta stop eating the pizza. I don't know. I got, it's like a habit now. Every every week, I order like pepperoni pizza. So pie chart. Pie chart is good for looking at percentages. If you want to see the relative amounts of data. Okay, so if I want to do a survey among middle schoolers and figure out what social media sites they spend most of their time on, out of 100% of all the students, I do a survey, say all middle schoolers. So here we have a pie chart to show uh, the social media sites that middle schoolers use. The whole thing is 100% and then we have 35% like Instagram, 15% Snapchat, 2% Facebook. I made up these numbers by the way so I'm just showing you though if you're looking at percentages you would use pie chart or if you just want to see the relative amounts of data for each category, pie chart. Okay, it's eight. Now looking at this I can tell right away that TikTok is the most popular, let's say, for example. Very easy to read the data versus having a bunch of numbers and it can be very confusing. Okay, fourth type of graph is called a scatter plot. And a scatter plot or scatter graph, it is a way of looking at the relationships between the variables. We're looking for a pattern. Okay, is there any relationship? Is there a positive correlation, negative correlation, or no correlation? We do that by using a scatter plot. And it's really a type of line graph, but you don't connect the points. Okay, you create a line of best fit that kind of shows the average in among the data. So scatter plot. So if we think about your paper plane lab, you want to see if there's a relationship between, let's say, the wingspan and how far the plane's traveled. We would use a scatter plot for that because we're looking for, we want to determine if there's a correlation, in other words, a relationship, or is there no correlation, no relationship. So we would create a scatter plot for that. Let's say I tested different wingspans, so a wingspan of two centimeters, four centimeters, six centimeters. Let's say I did all the way to 16, and then measured the distance they traveled. So I did this with each one. So I've got a lot of points here. Scattered plot, we do not just connect the points. We want to look at the overall pattern of the data. And we're going to really create what's called a line of best fit, or a regression line. So this is a line that really should represent the averages of the data. Look at this. We can see, just by looking at this, we can see a general upward trend. You can see the data generally is going up. Positive slope in general. So we're going to create a line that's about the average of all of this data. So let's say this is our line of best fit. It's obviously a positive correlation. So if, one, if waistband went increased, the distance traveled also increased. Okay, as you decrease the wingspan, the distance traveled decreased. So remember, positive correlation, they both go up. Woo! Positive. Or they both go down. Positive correlation, up or down. They're going together, they're going the same direction. Positive correlation. So here we have it. So this is what we can tell. With statistics, I mean, it gets a little more, a little more complicated because you want to see how strong the correlation is with statistics or if there's no correlation at all. But we're not going to get into the statistics right now. Now, if we look at this data, 
there are some points that are outside of the averages. Look at this data. There are some points that are outside of the averages. 16 centimeters, you had a plane that only went two meters. And the rest of them seem to go about six meters. That is what's called an outlier. So there might have been an error, because uh, there's always a chance for human error. And so it could be uh, when you threw it, you were distracted, your cell phone went off, somebody was calling you when you were really, like, ready to throw it, you were paying attention. Okay, so this would be considered an outlier. So this, this is data. Outliers are really data that don't follow the pattern. But you don't want to limit, you don't want to ignore the data. You have to record your data. Um, the line of best fit is really calculated by determining how far the points are outside of the mean. This is an example of a scatter plot. And we will uh, be using these a lot in science class. And we're going to learn how to graph using Google Sheets, similar to Excel. If you're familiar with Excel, it's actually an easier version using Google Sheets.